What's up? This is Eric Robinson, and you know I got soul. You know it. <laughs> Dope. Man, it's, it's a pleasure to um, to interview a, a neo soul legend like yourself. Pleasure is mine. <laughs> um, so how how did the collaboration come about with you and Fonte? I know you guys had chemistry before. So what inspired this new project? Well, we've been talking about it for years, man. We were, we said we were going to do it. We probably said about two two years ago we probably first publicly talked about it, but you know it was from the time we first met each other, you know, just like-minded dudes talk, you know, we became really good friends. So whenever I was working on something, it was a no-brainer to give him a call. Whenever he was working on something, you know, he'd give me a call. So I think we built a collaboration just off of that for for you know for years and then you know it might have been like if I show up at a show or whatever but then we kind of did a couple of shows together and those things went pretty crazy so it was like you know no time better than now and I think we we, we were going to do it le last year and then just life just got crazy I think when I had I saw throat surgery a year and a half ago and that's definitely derailed us from doing it last year which we said we we're going to do and then um and then we said, let's let's do it. It was crazy because like, I got just had a baby. And he was on tour. So like, are we really doing this right now? Like, we got we got it done though, man. It was like it was bonkers, but but um, but it's easy, man. When you got somebody like that, you trust musically and vice versa. You just get in and try to make the best songs you can make, man. It was it was before you know it, we were done. I think what's dope is you both are dynamic artists. Both bring unique skills to the yeah. table. Uh, you know, I just wonder about what your guys' chemistry is like in the studio, what you both bring into it when you're creating together. Well, you know, it's interesting because I think we've always, like, if it's my project, it's kind of like I'm running point and, and it's very easy. And if it's his project, he's running point. So, okay, and then when it's, when it's a group, when we're doing a duo, somebody still has to kind of run point. So, you know, I think there were songs where, where he ran point, it was songs where I ran point. But at the same point, it's a trust factor. So it wasn't like, oh my God, I got to do five songs. You got to do five songs. I got to make sure. It was like, man, just if it's dope, man, let's just get it done. So um, so it was nice, man. I think it was, you know, you want to push each other to make things best because making an album is never easy. You know what I mean? But um, but it was easier, you know, than probably expected. I think our blend um, is a lot better than I probably expected. You know, even just from both of us singing at the same time. But it was just, it was dope. I would say that we started, uh, man, we probably shot out like 10 plus ideas that were like amazing before we even settled on like the sound. What was the sound, the Tigalero sound, what was the sound gonna be? And I think once we figured that out, the rest of it was like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. I think just getting started was the hardest part. Once we kind of was like, I think uh, My Kind of Lady was the first song we did. And when we did that one, we were like, Okay, that's, that's it. Let's let's go that way. You know, and it was like the rest, rest of the album was pretty easy. Yeah, so like I can't stop listening to it like um through the night and uh, sometimes it, it just varies which one is my favorite song. Good. But good. um far as sonically, what 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 was the what was the direction you was trying to go instrument what what was the direction you was trying to go with this project and like who were some of the producers who helped collaborate on this album? Was it Night Wonder or who Well no, nah, no, nah, you know, well well I will say that Zoe and Nicolay did some uh, like almost like post production on different things. They probably helped to kind of connect the dots. Um, you know, there was one song. There's uh, "Wait Waiting for You," which is a combination of Rich Medina, Paris from King, and Stro did that one. Um, uh, uh, S1 did one. Uh, what's my man that did the two the, the, the two tracks? They were incredible. Um, and even my band did did join the, the uh, waiting for you. I know waiting for you. I'm sorry. Uh, grow this love. And if Fonte always get on me because I keep saying growing love. He's like, man, this song's called Grow This Love. I'm like, I got three kids, man. I ain't getting no sleep. But um, my boys Aaron and uh, and uh, Slim Cat did that one. Uh, something that you were just talking about. Uh, amazing producer Daniel Crawford from Cali did that one. So it was it was, it was different producers. It really only one producer who actually did two songs on the album. But like I said, um, I think Zoe and Nicolay did a great job of kind of like, if a bass was needed here on a bridge or kind of, you know, added some like co-production throughout to kind of make it sonically feel the same. So like um, each month you, you do you do the Soul Village um, yeah. perform, uh, performance here you host. So um, what made you what made you do this event? Because it's, it's, so, it's so dope, I think. Yeah. Soul Village? Yeah. Well, you know, it, it always goes back to 
you know, I was, I remember when I was, I was a songwriter trying to become an artist, and I was calling to try to do a venue to do a show, and I was calling SOBs, and, they, and I, I couldn't get booked. I was really, really doing my best, and, you know, a manager at the time was, was, was calling, and then we just said, you know what, how much does the, how much does the venue cost? And we rented the venue. You know, and we did our own concert. Like, you know, at this point, if you're not gonna book me, then I'm just gonna book myself. And I think the concert was so successful that they, from that point on, they were booking me. And then um, there was a young lady, Erica Elliott, uh, who handled the booking as well here. And she, one day I was doing a show, and she said, "You know what? Pretty much all the other artists like you. You know, other artists that you know, if they call trying to get on stage, we probably be like, we don't know you from a can of paint, so we ain't just gonna give you a night." Um, and I was like, yeah, there's plenty, there's plenty. So he's like, if we do a, a night, you know, showcasing those acts, would you be down to host it? And I was like, I guess so. I mean, it really started on something like, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, that's 12 plus 13 years, I think, wow. now. Um, but it was a it was a beautiful decision. Uh, you know, I was honored, man. And I think a lot of amazing things have happened on that stage. The, the crazy thing is, Larry told me there's only one other act who probably have been has been on that stage more than I have been now. So I feel the honor to say that that I'm at least number two. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get that number one number one spot. But there was like a there was like a um, like a Brazilian band that like was doing like four nights a, a week for like six years or something. So you know it's gonna be hard to catch them. But when you think of you know we've been doing it 13 years every month at least you know showcasing four to six acts. Yeah. Like how many people have graced the stage and we've had some really grow into some big and better things. So that was the whole reason, man. It's kind of you know, shine a light on 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 something that doesn't really get showcased. You know what I mean? Can you reflect on on your career and all that you've accomplished, which has allowed you to do a Soul Village every month, which has allowed you to pursue this passion project, Tigolero yeah. with Fonte. You know, you it, it, you've accomplished so much that's allowed you to take on these other projects. What does that mean to you to uh, be where you are right now? Well, I think a lot of it. I mean, it's dedication. I mean, when you think of this was every third Wednesday for. 13 years and that's to get married and having kids and and you know I, I don't live in New York you know I live in South Jersey so it's a two-hour drive here and back every time you know what I mean so it's a it's a dedication but it's something that was I wanted to do and it's like giving back and that's for every project I mean when we, when we, when we did the Tigolero album the team of Fonte I, I wouldn't care if it sold five records or 50,000 or 500,000 it's like that's my brother yeah. let's just do some music man and, and hopefully somebody feel it we gonna like it and we gonna laugh and kick it and, and you know be able to share some times and hopefully it does well and I think that's the same thing with with Soul Village or any other project that I kind of work on even as a songwriter I can't think of an artist that I've written for that I wouldn't have bought their album anyway. You know, I've been very fortunate to work with people I'm fans of. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, I would have, I'd have probably been on that record, like studying the credits. Mm -hmm. Whether I, you know, so I, I've been real fortunate with that. And I mean, maybe I, a lot of I do pick, you know, passion projects. But at the end of the day, it's like, uh, I'm very much a process or a product thing. I don't really think much of like. What's going to work? I, I, I want to really think about how it feels to do the work. You know what I mean? It's amazing. And um, as a pioneer in the music game, what what advice can you give to to the next up and coming artist who's who's aspiring to be the next Eric Robeson? Try to you know be. There's no nothing better than now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like understand na the now. Like even five seconds will be now. So don't even worry about five seconds later. Like worry on now. Take care of this. Like. When you when you sit down to write a song, try to write the best song you can write, but don't worry about it. Like try to just write it. Try to be as connected. When you get on stage, I'll tell you the, the best advice I can give you. And let's say if we bring back right the Soul Village, I can't tell you how many times I walked in and I see somebody doing sound check, and they might have just walked in. They got the book bag on, they got the hat, you know, they got the you know even a, a beat up T-shirt, even walked through, but they got a swag to them, you know, even a female or whatever. And they're killing that sound check. They're just natural and they're singing and doing all this. And then they come downstairs and they go in that dressing room and they take off themselves. And they put on what a stylist may have given them and put a whole bunch of makeup and put on some new sneakers they don't feel comfortable. And they get on stage and they just, they don't have that same swag that they had at sound check when they were who they were. And it's like, I think that was a valuable lesson. I, I actually had a show uh, here many, many years ago. This is, this is before Soul Village. And it wasn't a good show. Like I remember, like my friends at the time when I walked up that stage, like the next day we were talking, they were like, 
I think you missed. Like you missed. I think you were trying too hard. It was one of them days where like a stylist gave me this new leather jacket and I was all uncomfortable and like, eh. you know, I was just trying to do like just trying to win over so bad. Mm -hmm. And I realized it's like, you know what? Never again, man. I get on stage with a dirty T-shirt. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you walk away go. He had on a he had on a horrible outfit, but he was killing. Mm -hmm. Rather than like, yo, his show was so so, but his outfit was dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying or whatever. Like so. At the end of the day, and I think Soul Village has been great. Man, being a host here has allowed me to just do some wild stuff, man. I mean, I lay, lay down on the floor, or <laughs> put water all on myself, or make up songs, or whatever. So that looseness came from this stage. You know what I mean? That it really, that wasn't, if you saw my show 15 years ago, it wasn't that. You know what I mean? I was barely, barely talking. Devin wasn't joking. Mm -hmm. You know, but when we got in this show, it was like, we just try anything. Let's try it. So mm -hmm. then, of course, that would leak into other things, and out of it, it made me a better, a better performer, and a better writer, and all across the board. So I appreciate uh, Soul Village for that. And just to wrap up, tell us, uh, you know, the Tigalero albums out now. What can we expect next from Eric Roberson? Tigalero albums out now. Uh, my brother Fonte's uh, Tigalero solo album is coming up in a couple months. I think sometime in September. Man, he's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just a workaholic. <laughs> Um, and my next solo album, which I, I, I kind of might have titled, but, uh, but I won't, I won't leak it yet. I won't leak it yet, but I will say like early, early, uh, 2017, like maybe early February, um, it'll be coming out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's like, it's probably 80% done, but just want to, you know, See if I can find some more goosebumps. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. That's dope. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to add? Thank you. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the love, man. Yeah, you know I mean, if, if it wasn't for the love, we, we we wouldn't be here. So, at no point do I do I take that lightly. Absolutely. Yeah.